Good morning to everyone. Welcome to our service of worship at, at Ebenezer United Church on this Sunday, January 16th. I would like to thank Reverend Dr. Thomas Shin, our minister, Murphy and the choir for music, and also our support team, Susan, Sean, and Doug, whose work make this Zoom service possible. New Year blessings in this year with all the new and unimaginable opportunities that lie before us, let's recommit to be in worship with our hearts, soul, and body. Today we have a special announcement by Ralph Dunham. Ralph? Thanks very much, Tisa. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody. As most of you know, Ebenezer has been a very proud supporter of the Out of the Cold program for many years. And this has been really appreciated by the members of our community that are experiencing housing challenges. The last two winters have been especially difficult for them due to COVID, a severe lack of affordable housing, and reduced employment opportunities. As a result, more of our neighbors are now living rough on the streets and relying on support programs like Out of the Cold. But these programs cost money. So each year, Blue Door, Out of the Cold, runs a fundraising walkathon called Coldest Night of the Year. And this year, Ebenezer will be participating. Jane Smythe will be the team captain for the Ebenezer Walkers, and you are invited to join her as a walker, a sponsor, or as a cheerleader. And if you're a student, you'll be able to earn community service hours by participating as well. You'll be seeing and hearing a lot more about this special event in the next few weeks, but for now, please mark February the 26th, that's February the 26th on your calendar, and plan on being part of the Ebenezer Coldest Night of the Year walking team. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ralph. The announcements for the following week are in the e-news you would have received this morning. I, I would just highlight a few of them. God's Garden Project is a weekly family ministry program on Zoom. If you, your friends, your neighbors are interested in nurturing your family's faith, please contact Reverend Dr. Shin to register today with no fee at ebenezeruz at gmail.com. Black History Month, Please speak with Reverend Dr. Shin after service or by email if you are interested in participating during Black History Sunday on February the 6th. Uh, for the annual reports, please send reports to Susan by February 2nd. If you have any questions about what is required, please email ebenezer5000 at gmail.com. Thank you for all your work in 2021. For the Ebenezer's Heritage Tower, it can stand strong again with your help. Please call Jim Owens at 905-242-3038 for details on two important projects, New Church Signage and Heritage Hall Tower. Thank you for joining our Zoom service. We invite you to stay after the service for our virtual coffee and discussion time. Now let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Thank you, Tisa and your life. Um, welcome all of you to this service. And I love you and may God bless you. Let us open the service with a call to worship. I wait patiently for God, who turned to me and heard my cry, who lifted me up, when I was stuck out of the mud and mire and set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. We sing a new song, one in praise of God. Blessed are we when we make the Lord our trust, when we do not become distracted by false goddess and empty promises. We sing of all your many wonders, O God, too many to declare them all. Blind sacrifice and offerings made in vain, you do not desire, 
you open our ears to hear your voice. We sing, here I am, I have come. Thy will be done, O my God, your law is in my heart. We gather in worship because we seek to make your truth known. Your steadfast love and truth are the source of salvation of life. Amen. We light this candle as a symbol of the light of Christ, which cannot be held back by distance, which shines in each of us, no matter where we are. The first hymn today we are going to see, Voices United 218, We Pray to You, O God. this service, would you pray with me? God of healing, God of wholeness, we bring our brokenness, our sinfulness, our fears and despair, and lay them at your feet. God of healing, God of wholeness, we hold out our hearts and hands, minds and souls, to feel your touch and to know the peace only you can bring. God of healing, God of holiness, in your presence and power, grant us faith and confidence that broken lives are made whole. As you have given us this new year, you also give us a new hope and even offer us new life in you. We love to be in your presence. We bless and thank you. We praise and adore you. Thank you for your eternal love for your children. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. The next hymn we are going to see, More Voices 161. I have called you by your name. Thank 
Today's scripture readings, our first reading is from Romans 5, verses 1 to 5. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to his grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. The second reading is from Romans 8, verses 18 verses 18 to 21. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. Amen. Thank you, Tessa. Uh, before we share God's message, would you pray with me one more time? Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for giving us your word today. We know that you gave it because we need it. This time, Holy Spirit, come to us and anoint us. Open our eyes, ears, and heart so that we understand you, we testify you, and we love you more than ever. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Today, I want us to talk to us today about suffering and about pain and its role in believers' lives. Now, I want to be clear here that I'm not saying that pain and suffering are something to be pursued, that we should want to chase pain and suffering. Noah, am I saying that there aren't many, many negative impacts of pain and suffering, and particularly of trauma, especially in the lives of children and the impact that makes. But just like saying that, the immune system develops as it is exposed to germs and sicknesses. We don't go pursue sicknesses so that we will develop a stronger immune system. But there is plenty of sicknesses to go around. And so we celebrate that God uses that sickness to develop an immune system within us. So too, we don't go pursuing pain and suffering, but God indeed uses pain and suffering to make changes in us, to grow us, 
to help us develop and bless it. I want to show you some things that maybe you will recognize some of. This is Wave Rock in Utah. I've never seen it, but it is beautiful. Life was grown across it for all of these generations, all of centuries, and has created that real beauty. Well, what about this? Do you recognize this? This is Rainbow Mountain in Peru. Isn't it great? It was created when one, one plate of the earth shifted on the, the other plate of the earth and created massive earthquakes, huge massive earthquakes. And these mountains were created by just that difficulty. This beauty by that beauty, difficulty. Well, maybe you are familiar with this. Creator Lake in Oregon. And it is believed to be the clear least water, an incredible shade of blue. It's 2,000 feet deep at its deepest point, and there is hemlock that flows on it. And it always remains in upright. It's called the old man of the sea, and it's always been there and shows up at different places on Creator Lake in Oregon. I want to go see it as well someday. So what I'm trying to say is that those difficulties, those painful experiences, life blowing across us constantly can create some real beauty and works within us to bring about sanctification and blessings. I just want us to look at this passage where Paul, Apostle Paul is talking. Here is what he says. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us. Let's talk specifically about what this suffering can produce. First, it produces what it produces, endurance. I'd like to share a story with you, Steve. He is one of my previous church members. Steve had cardiac by bypass surgery. And after that, he was admitted to heart camp. This is a re rehab program well after heart surgery. They do rehab. There, they put him on the treadmill and he would walk a certain distance every day. And next day, he'd walk a little further. Then the next day, he would walk a little further. And the next day, he would walk a little further. Then after he got where he could do that, then he began to increase the elevation, the slant of the treadmill, so that he was walking uphill further and further every day. He said it was hard and he was out of breath. Thankfully, they had monitors on him so that he didn't push himself too hard. But each day he would develop more endurance. And what I thought was really cool was that once a week, they would move him way back down to a much easier level. So he could experience the growth to feel how much he would grown and how much now those things that last week seems to so hard now are so much easier. I think that is applicable to our spiritual lives as well. That when we deal with suffering or difficulties or challenges that come our way, we learn how to cope with them. We learn how to wrestle with them. And that builds within us this endurance. 
this ability to continue to strive and to grow, and we find we can handle more than we thought we could. And to handle more than we usually to be able to. There is a country band called Cowboy Mouth. Let me read to you some of the lyrics. Now that you are gone, I find that I'm strong and I can deal with anything. I can handle anything. Yes, I've been burned, but what have I learned? I can deal with anything. I can handle anything. Suffering and pain produce endurance, perseverance, now, the second thing it says is that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces what? Endurance produces character. This is a such interesting word, character. It is not usually translate character. It is a word in Greek that deals with passing a test or evidence of something being true. In other places, it translates as the word proof. What it's saying is that you pass a test, you withstand the reality of the world around you. So you are not just pretending. It's not just a facade that you are full of faith and hope. But in fact, it is true even in the face of reality of the world around us. That's character. Let me share with you those four noble truths. There are four kinds of truths. The first one is the truth of suffering. The second one is the truth of cause of suffering. The third one is the truth of the end of suffering. And the first, first one is the truth of the path that leads to the end of suffering. The point is the world we live in is going to lead to suffer, or suffering, to pain. It may be physical pain or illness, or it may have to deal with our mind, it may have to do with our heart, for our relationships. There are so many other things. But one of the things that character recognizes is that that is the way it is. That stuff happens. And as a result of stuff happening, we are going to hurt. And character recognizes that. It acknowledges the truth of that. It's like the line from A Few Good Men where Jack Nicholson says, you can't handle the truth. Well, this word character says, endurance produces you being able to handle the truth of suffering. Helen Keller, who is a woman scientist, who dealt with a lot of suffering in her own life, as well as incredible joy said this. Character cannot be developed in easy and quiet. Only through the experience of trial and suffering can the soul be strengthened, vision cleared, ambition inspired, and success achieved. I liked how one commentator spoke about the word character. He said that character is the tempered steel of virtue. That even with the fire on it, it gets stronger and it holds fast to values, even in times when those values are really challenged. Even in difficult times, maybe especially in difficult times. Though this character is a recognition of the truth of suffering. And I will tell you that those with that kind of weathered, tempered character may in fact be listening to this message today and thinking, minister, 
you are way too simplistic. Suffering is really painful. It's not for sissies. It is to be avoided if possible. It is real. And character holds fast, fast to values, holds fast to faith, even in the midst of death suffering. Suffering produces that. Now I think the word character involves more than just that. It is a very broad term. It has to do with a number of things, then let me share some of them. It has to do with gratitude. One of the things suffering does is help us realize how to put an end to or bridle the sense of entitlement that we often feel. Look, I deserve a happy life. Look, who knows what you deserve? And the, and the opposite of that entitlement is what? Yes, gratitude. So the one who has been living in an incredible drought and suffering through that drought is incredibly grateful, dancing when it rains. The one who has not had a job, who has been laid up and been unemployed for some period of time is incredibly grateful for a job that comes their way. One who has been isolated and shut up and not able to see anyone for so long when they are able to sit down in a room with someone and not have to wear a mask. They are incredibly grateful for that simple pleasure. Grateful for the chance to look someone in the face and have a conversation or give them a hug to touch them. These are things we just so often take for granted. And what being deprived of those things does is to help build that sense of gratitude. Another part of character that suffering begins to bring about is a sense of compassion and empathy. I think it's just so interesting that you can't talk about suffering in a theoretical sense. Even as, as much as I'm doing it, it here today, you can't talk about suffering in a theoretical sense any more than you can try and explain to someone who has been blind all of his or her life what the color blue is like. You can't connect with someone else's suffering until you have suffered yourself. That suffering builds within you a sense of empathy and compassion for the suffering of someone else. And you are not going to develop that empathy or compassion without some suffering yourself. Reverend Fritz William says, Suffering and joy teach us if we allow them how to make the leap of empathy, which transport us into the soul and heart of another person. In those transparent moments, we know other people's sorrows and we care about their concerns as if they were our own. Character is this term of people who have this wisdom, this sense of reality. We are grateful for every good thing. We care about others and can identify with their suffering. So suffering produces endurance and character. And finally, suffering produces hope. Isn't that interesting? Suffering produces hope. There are different kinds of hope. There is a short-term hope that kind of connects a little bit with optimism. That's the hope that says, yes, right now it's really bad, but 
new vaccines are coming, new medicines are coming. We've all been living with that kind of hope right now. That as hard as this is that we are going through right now, we know that there will be a day when we will be able to come back into this sanctuary and all worship together. We can be in the community again. The choir will be back again. But that's not the kind of hope that Apostle Paul is talking about here. And frankly, for a whole host of people, that's not the kind of hope that even in the midst of this coronavirus comes to their minds. Because they have lost people that won't be back. They want to be able to come to sit in our sanctuary and worship. So what kind of hope is he talking about? He's talking about the type of hope that believes that one day that things will be made right again. That the world broken as it is, flood as it is, will be restored and renewed. That one day we will be in a new heaven and new earth and new Jerusalem. And we hold fast to that hope because of our faith. Just a few chapters later in Romans 8 are among the most famous passages. Apostle Paul says, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. That what we are dealing with today is nothing like the incredible glory we are going to experience. Then we use this image of the suffering that we are in right now is like a birth pang like a mother giving birth. A mother can withstand the suffering of childbirth because she knows that something amazing and awesome is coming. A musician can keep practicing the violin or piano until his or her fingers are bloody from practicing and practicing. <laughs> because he or she knows that the product on the other end will be glorious. The athletes can keep training and training and go through the pain of training for the sake of the victory on the other side. Jesus hangs on the cross and suffers and suffers for the sake of our victory on the other side for the sake of the glory that is to be revealed. That's what our hope is. That all through our lives, there is going to be some times of suffering, but none of those are worthy, worth comparing to that which is ahead. Let me close with a poem that's by R. Browning Hamilton. It is a short one. It's called Along the Road, and it goes like this. I walked a mile with pleasure. She chattered all the way, but left me none the wiser for all she had to say. I walked a mile with sorrow, and near a word said she, but all the things I learned from her when sorrow walked with me. No one would deny that this broken world we are in is full of suffering and we don't pursue that suffering. It is impossible for us, both Christians and non-Christians, to avoid that reality. But Ebenezer brothers and sisters, let us not be discouraged by the suffering and pain 
that we have what we are in. In today's scripture, God confirms that we are not called just to be become agonizing. God promises that he will show us how to use that suffering for his glory and to keep that hope alive within us. Again, Romans chapter 8, verse 18 says, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. I pray that is true in your life and in mine. Everyone says, Amen. Amen. We continue the service with a hymn, More Voices 79. Spirit, open my heart. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 to 8, Jesus says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. This time, let us pray for several things in silence for a while. First of all, let us pray for God's kingdom, glory, and righteousness. Also, let us pray for dedicating our beings, our lives, with our offerings. It is a new year. Let us pray for new year, new blessings, and new journey. Let us pray for our church, Ebenezer United Church, and each family. If we have any personal wishes and needs, just ask trust and listen, he will respond to you in lowly and gentle. Let's pray for a while in silence.
healer of our every ill, light of each tomorrow, give us peace beyond our fear and hope beyond our sorrow. We pray for all those in need, whether in body, mind or spirit, that your healing light and presence will bring comfort and peace. We pray for Angie Fix, Michelle Gillette, Mavis Grange and her daughter, Dorothy Grant, Joan and Clyde's friends, David and Donnelly Gallison, Phyllis Harvey, Manic's mother, Iris, Diane McLean as she cares for her cousin, Tanya's friend, Carol and her family, Mirella's father, Jim and Joyce's friend, Becky Shields, Rick Saunders, Diane's friend, Tokiko, Joseph Salins, Joseph Stefaniak, Mary's brother, Basil, Connie's friend, Elaine Liba and her daughter, Andrea, Linda Wilson's friend, Linda and her family, Susan's friends, Joy and Reg, and their daughter, Erin, Heather and Will, and all those we name in silence. Please keep closing your eyes. Let me pray for offering. Loving God, accept the gifts of, of our time, talent, and offerings for the work of your church in this community and beyond. We share what we have so that the warmth and light of your love will spread to everyone. And we shout from our very inner needs, your glory. God of compassion, help us to take on a mantle of caring for all life, no matter what our differences are, so that we can make a real difference in the world. There are so many struggling for food or peace, for safety, or for the freedom to worship. We sometimes feel so helpless. Guide us to ways in which we can help those in need. Hope open us to receive your teachings. Help us let our little light shine by showing love to all. Help us to accept changes in our understanding of your word that encourage deeper thinking, 
shifts in perspectives and understanding, which can all lead us to a stronger faith. Bless those who are struggling with physical or mental or, or emotional illness, those grieving losses of any kind, and those who are attempting to find honesty in relationships, in social, family, or work situations. God, help those who are suffering find strength in your love and feel renewed in their faith. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let us do Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Before we close the service, we chant another hymn, More Voices 138, My Love Colored Outside the Lines. families, just as God's word was sent into the world, let us go into the world, 
to be light, love, healing, and hope. May the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the power and communion of the Holy Spirit, who will everything, who will turn everything into the gifts of our lives, be with you and all things in you. Amen. finished today's service. Uh, we are going to have a fellowship on Zoom after this. If you can join us, that will be wonderful. If you cannot, that's okay. We will see you next Sunday again. Thank you. God bless you.